hello everyone we've got a different little format for our video today I wanted to do something different from our normal thing because this week I'm sure you may not be aware but this week is National Infertility Awareness Week and as we've mentioned in the past we are one of the one in six couples who struggle with infertility. And you may be thinking, wait, but you have a beautiful baby boy. He is beautiful. <laughs> and yes, we do. But it was not an easy road to get to him. And not one that came naturally either. Or cheap. Or cheaply. <laughs> or fun. Yeah, we didn't have Gabriel the fun way. Or painless. <laughs> Man, we really earned that baby, <laughs> now that I think about it. Because we're filming outside and we live in DFW, and actually, actually close to the DFW airport, there's going to be a lot of noise. So, and, and it's a beautiful night, so people are out. And Jacob is sitting in a broken chair, so if he falls through it at any point in this video, don't be alarmed, he's fine. <laughs> Every year there is a different theme for National Infertility Awareness Week and this year's theme is Flip the Script. <laughs> my input right there. <laughs> and infertility is not talked about publicly very often. Um, it's People think of it as a, a shameful secret that they've got to bear and that's a shame because you shouldn't have to keep that a secret. You're struggling. And it, we should all be comfortable enough to talk about it. Typically when it's talked about, the couple really focuses on their own personal struggle and everyone has their own struggle and I'm not trying to diminish that by any means, but the way that I want to embrace the theme this year of flipping the script is to focus less on our own story, which we are gonna tell you about, but to make a, a call to action to our viewers and our followers about how they view infertility and having children. We've mentioned um, in previous videos that we had to do IVF in order to get Gabriel. And IVF is not an easy, cheap, fun process. There's no making a baby the good old-fashioned way. Not for us. <laughs> so after several years of trying the old-fashioned way and not being successful, we decided to seek out help, medical help. And we ran a litany of tests on both of us and pretty much were convinced that it, it was something to do with me. I was in a really high-stress job and I've always had irregular cycles. So pretty sure that I was the root cause of it. And as Jacob will link above, turns out it was because Jacob had a... <laughs> Who's got two thumbs and is infertile because of a genetic lung disease? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Which was really shocking. So male factor infertility is pretty rare and often not widely talked about. But mine's due to my cystic fibrosis. It's uh, one of the side effects. Um, without going into too many details about um, my private parts, I was born uh, with a vasectomy. A basically. naturally occurring vasectomy. Naturally occurring vasectomy. That's so, the easiest way to explain it. Yeah. Um, so about two years ago, we started our IVF process and we knew or were told that that was the only way that we'd be able to have a child of our own was that uh, through the IVF process. Um, and not going into too great of detail, IVF is a lot of shots. It's a whole lot of shots. A lot of fertility drugs and hormones, artificial hormones, basically to make the woman produce um, as many eggs as possible. Peak egg production. <laughs> and then at a certain point you have a trigger where we release those eggs. Which I had to do. <laughs> to give me the trigger, not release the eggs. I had, yeah. 
<laughs> I had to get the trigger shot. A trigger shot, which is a really long needle in your butt. Um, I did all the other shots to myself. I was fine with that. It wasn't an issue, but I couldn't get back to my butt. You do that once Jacob had to do it. Hands and knees. <laughs> it was very specific. You had to get it in a very specific spot, which we, made... We watched a lot of YouTube videos to try to figure out where that was. Yeah, they tell you, you know, there, here's a video you can watch that'll show you how to do it. And it's it's very specific. So it's a little nerve wracking because you're like, what if I miss? You know, I get shaky going in and stab in the wrong spot or something. You pull it out, stab again. And it has to be done at a really specific time before the retrieval the next day. It's a lot and of so, pressure. <laughs> a lot of pressure. And oddly enough, you get the trigger shot done, you go in for blood work to make sure that all of your levels are where they need to be. Excuse me. And when we did my blood work, I was not where I needed to be. So that could have meant that we had to scrap the whole thing and start over, which was not an option because it's so expensive and so time consuming. So we ended up doing another trigger shot and praise the Lord, it worked. Yeah, the second one, <laughs> the second one worked. So we released all the eggs and then the doctor would go in and retrieve them. So basically it's like, you know, a turkey baster. It's the easiest way to describe that without getting too graphic. Retrieves all the eggs. I don't remember quite how many I had. 23, which is actually a really good number. Um, and then at the same time of my retrieval, was Jacob's retrieval. <laughs> I did not get to do that the fun way either. <laughs> uh, we both had to be put under anesthesia. Uh, he did his procedure first. My urologist did his procedure. Performed my procedure in the room right next to where the room where they did Sarah's procedure. It was pretty quick. He came out and Jacob is really funny <laughs> under anesthesia. If ever he gets a medical procedure done in the future, we're definitely going to record it because he was chatty Kathy. He's chatty Kathy now, y'all. I talk a lot regularly. <laughs> so I got to see him um, after his procedure, and then it was time for mine, and they rolled me in and put me under, retrieved everything they had to do, and then I came out, and I just remember being in a lot more pain than I thought I would be. So after everything is retrieved, that is when it is all swirled together. Again, more really... This scientific terms we got going on in this video yeah <laughs> um, swirl together and the embryos are created at that point you have to see um, how many of them mature right um, the to a point that they're viable so uh, of the 24 eggs yeah. we had I don't remember how many embryos it went we had 12 and then it went down to 10 and then um, we ended up with six, six six final embryos after a seven to ten day period once the embryos have matured to the point where they're ready to be transferred then it's transfer day transfer day is a lot easier than retrieval day you don't have to be put under <laughs> you do have to lay flat for an hour like i felt like i was an episode of friends with my <laughs> feet up um they make you sign all these papers right before saying what you're gonna do in all these different scenarios, well, who gets control of what? You know, if you should we divorce? Divorce? If should you one die? of us passes away? So you have to make these decisions. <laughs> like literally thirty minutes before the baby is put inside of you, <laughs> we're sitting there. We were not expecting to answer any of those questions. So we're sitting in there, and Sarah's mom is there, and we're just kind of like, uh, uh, she she can take the she. We, <laughs> yeah, that's not something you think about. Who's ever ready to answer those questions? Uh, not when you're having your baby made <laughs> so we did the transfer everything went relatively smoothly actually funny story no i wasn't going to go into that because i don't want to get too detailed <laughs> i'm going into it funny story so i don't know i don't remember exactly what happened there's a long tube things weren't where they were supposed to be the new turkey baster the new turkey baster was not was not calibrated <laughs> um and there's a monitor so that you can you can actually watch the, the embryo the transfer. being implanted. Yeah, the embryo being put in. He's like, and he says, here's where this is going to happen. This is how it's going to happen and all that stuff. So, And I'm laying there and there's a nurse right next to me with the sonogram wand showing them <laughs> my stomach. And Jacob is standing right next to that nurse. And yeah, actually, she's across. I was on the other side. 
and I'm because I was kind of leaning over you and I'm looking at the monitor because I'm thinking this is a really special moment most people don't get to see this process because you know it happens other you know another other you, you don't there's not a monitor technically typically so anyway I, <laughs> I stumbled over myself so it's a very it's a special moment really important thing for me I really wanted to see it so the embryologist like the room where they do this the, there's a lab next to it and the embryologist can come and go and then the fertility specialist that doctor is there and he's the one that does the actual transfer so he's goes in you know he's under there and he's like well there's a problem and he reaches he talks to the embryologist she goes back to the lab she comes back and, and she the goes ultrasound back in. tech tells me you know we have to hold on for a second and she says it very softly in my ear i didn't hear her say that <laughs> so she's holding the wand to sarah's stomach and and i'm looking at the monitor and i'm just <laughs> and i'm like okay and he's about this close to my face and like and 20 nothing minutes is happening. go by 15 minutes and 20 so I minutes to look at him i'm like what are you doing and i was like i was like it's taking a long time it's taking a really long time and sarah's like what what's going on and i and i don't know if i was like so am i supposed to see something <laughs> and the fertility specialist was like we're not having done anything yet. we're not doing anything i'm waiting on the embryologist to come back and so i've been staring at a monitor for 20 minutes <laughs> And nothing's happening. I'm literally just staring at what was like your uterus or something. I'm just staring at it on the screen for, for a solid 20 minutes. It wasn't really 20 minutes, but it felt like 20 minutes. Yeah. So that's and our funny transfer story. Nothing. Yeah. And the fact that Sarah's mom was there. Yeah. Sarah, my mom got to be there for the conception. I don't know if that's what you'd call that. <laughs> Technically, your mom's never not there for that. <laughs> so. So we transferred. We went home. Um, you're supposed to rest the next couple of days. We had purchased Hall & Oates tickets months, months, months previously and had planned this fun outing with our family. And so that was two days after transfer. I was still in some pain. He had a two-week recovery, so he was still... Uh, <laughs> I was still in a, uh, a, a decent amount of pain. Yeah. And lots of frozen bags of peas. Lots of peas made the rounds <laughs> in the house, but uh, I went in full costume. I did not let my uh, recovery <laughs> get in the way of my enjoyment of the concert. So I went full costume. Picture here. <laughs> Picture to be inserted. So we had a great time. Everything was fine. And then we had a two week wait, which is probably the longest two weeks of your life ever. And then you go in and you get blood work done and that blood work is going to tell you if you're pregnant or not. So we went in and had the blood work done. You have to wait for them to process it so you know. <laughs> so uh, my parents were in town. My parents were in town also. Or we called them on the phone or something. Um, we got the call from the clinic and she gave us the good news that my levels were where they were supposed to be. But you're not done after that. You have to go back in another couple days and get blood work taken again to make sure that your levels are at this right point again. So we did that and that was fine and then you wait a couple more weeks and you get to go and have a sonogram and hear the heartbeat for the first time and then it after that they release you to your OBGYN and you were pregnant ready to go so all of that went really fine for us we we're very very lucky and fortunate that our first attempt was successful that's not usually the case and we had a fresh transfer um, a lot of times they'll do a frozen transfer where they'll actually freeze the embryos and then put them in that way, which is what we're going to have to do in the future. We've got four frozen M babies, what they're called, <laughs> waiting for us. So the next time we do this, we'll have to do a frozen transfer. I don't believe we'll have to do all of the shots. Um, obviously not the retrieval because we've already gotten everything we need. So it should not be as involved, hopefully. So that is our IVF story. And now we're gonna flip the script. So I've told you, we've told you our story. Uh, I want to challenge our viewers and our followers um, to be more aware of how you talk about having children or conception or anything like that. Because one in six couples struggle with infertility and it's not talked about very often. So an offhand joking comment about how, you know, you wish you were single 
and you're unattached and had no children or you just want to drink wine and not have to worry about your responsibilities. Um, if you say that in mixed company, there's probably a good chance that someone you're sharing that with wants a child so desperately and can't have it. And that comment is just really hurtful. So that's my challenge to you is to think about those things. Think about those comments that are so easy to make and to brush off that you may not realize what it does to the person who's listening to it. It's a sensitive topic and there's not a lot of help for it and not a lot of community around it. And so I just want everyone to be aware of how we talk about those things. And I'll say, if you do have children, if you've been blessed to have kids, and I say blessed because I think that it's truly every, a blessing. every baby you can have is a blessing, you know, and, and people at pre like unplanned pregnancy, I have now have a different view of because <laughs> of how hard, how much work we how had to go through. ours was. Ours took a lot of work. Um, and like, w I, when it, it, it breaks my heart when people complain. You know, I know, I know, I know that it's a, um, a life-changing event. Um, and there is going to be some degree of, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? But just, you know, keep in mind that there are people out there that would love to have that problem. You know, an unplanned pregnancy would be awesome. Um, and so just remember that you're blessed and uh, there are people that aren't as blessed. So, you know, and I'm not trying to be preachy, you know, but just when you think about complaining, which like when I go to the CF clinic and I have to spend an entire day there and I get four shots and I have to be scanned and sit in the, you know, Nobody likes to spend the day at the hospital, especially if they're not sick. But when I go into the CF clinic and I'm sitting in, in my exam room and I can hear someone in the room next to me coughing up their lungs, I have, you know, it's very sobering and I remember I have no place to complain. Um, so just remember when you get ready to complain or when you're, little, we call Gabriel our little angel baby. <laughs> So when, when your little angel baby is driving you absolutely crazy... It's a little devil baby. <laughs> yeah. Remember to be thankful. Take a breath and uh, be thankful that you have that because a lot of people would kill to have that pain. You know, to kill, would kill to have that baby screaming. A teething baby wake them up in the middle of the night. And I guess I'd say that's what... It's not... It's never easy getting up in the middle of the night or changing terrible diapers or anything like that. But it's a little easier for us because I think we appreciate it. We were ready for it. Yeah. We wanted it. We welcomed the change. We welcomed the, the struggle, so to speak. We wanted the struggle. We wanted We desperately baby. wanted all of the things that come with having a baby. So, there you go. To National you. Infertility Week. <laughs> Awareness week. <laughs> Awareness week. So now you're aware. Uh, we'll link some information down at the bottom. If you found this video because you're struggling with infertility and you want to talk to us more, we're happy to do that. Our, Obviously, our life yeah. is an open book because we put it on the internet. All of it. <laughs> our email is in the description below. Yeah. So, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys later.